Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick comparison between the Sony RX100 Mark IV on the left and the A6300 on the right. Now these are two very different cameras, but because of their respective pricing, they inherently will be compared to one another, because after all, they both are roughly a thousand US dollars. So even though the RX100 Mark IV is part of the Cybershot lineup, which is a point-and-shoot camera, uh, it's priced at 950 US, so certainly an expensive choice, but really one of the best pocket point and shoot cameras ever made. Uh, 20, meg uh, 20 megapixel one inch sensor, great in low light, uh, dedicated flash, dedicated OLED viewfinder right here that pops out uh, where the flash used to be. Uh, you have a fully articulating LCD display, uh, 4K video capture however, is limited to five minutes on this camera. So that's something to be aware of. But otherwise, this is basically the best camera that will fit in your pocket. So if your goal is to have exactly that, the zero compromise uh, pocketable uh, imaging and video capture machine, or beast if you will, the RX100 Mark IV is exactly that. However, for a thousand, or in this case, 1150, US dollars. The A6300 is now available. Granted, it is a larger sensor, APS-C, as opposed to the one-inch sensor inside uh, the RX100 Mark IV. By the way, the RX100 Mark IV also does have uh, high-speed, or excuse me, slow-motion video capture as well. Uh, but the A6300 has all of that and then some. Of course, a larger sensor, as I just mentioned, APS-C class sensor. It is a bigger body. This is not going to fit in a traditional pocket, maybe a cargo uh, pant pocket. But other than that, you know, this is an interchangeable lens camera, something that here uh, with the Sony RX100 Mark IV, you are not getting. This is an f1.8 lens, but uh, it is fixed to the camera. And even though it does have you know, zooming capability, you're not going to ever reach uh, the telephoto end of what you could potentially reach or, say, use the specific primes that exist in the E-mount uh, lens system that you can here with the 6300. But when it comes to uh, the form factor, even though the 6300 is basically twice the size of the RX100 Mark IV, and again, close in price, I still think that the fact that they're so close in price and in size... Uh, again, even though this isn't going to fit in most pockets, uh, the 6300, uh, no cap on 4K, well, there is a cap on 4K, 29 minutes, but it's not going to overheat. That's something that you will face with the RX100 Mark IV, which is why I'm pointing it out. Uh, it does have overheating issues when it comes to capturing 4K video. Even when I was using it in my underwater uh, enclosure while scuba diving, you know, overheating was an issue, which is something I know I would not face with this camera in an underwater enclosure. Granted, that's one specific instance. Uh, also, the autofocus system here on the A6300 is incredible. Really best in class right now. Sony's marketing it as 4D. What it really equates to is that uh, you have 11 frames per second, uh, over 20 uh, in RAW, uh, in a burst mode, and there are 425 points of phase detection on this sensor, and uh, I think 168 in contrast. And then it even has high-density tracking so that not only is the autofocus system fast, 0 0.05 to achieve, uh, of a second to achieve autofocus, uh, but a step beyond that in that it actually is going to track its subject properly, and I have tested that. So that's something that... You know, the A6300 simply cannot be compared to the RX100 Mark IV. In terms of autofocus, uh, this is the superior camera. In terms of uh, still imaging when paired with the proper glass, this is the superior camera. Granted, it's larger and literally more expensive also. Uh, but once you start adding on some Zeiss glass or even non-Zeiss glass, let's say you go with the 18 to 105 power zoom, that's a $600 lens. Uh, this package is going to get a lot larger than with the kit lens that you see here and a lot more expensive. $600 piece of glass plus a $1,000 body, uh, you've already blown away the RX100 Mark IV. Also, no articulating, fully articulating screen here. You're not going to be able to shoot a selfie, for those of you that are wondering. This does not come all the way around, but the EVF on the A6300 is magnificent. Uh, that is one area where if you're someone who tends to prefer to shoot with an EVF, 
this is the better camera. Uh, granted, I don't use the EVF that much on the RX100 Mark IV. If I needed reading glasses, I probably would be using it all the time. And that's something that was introduced with the Mark III, uh, this style of EVF, but they do not compare at all. Wider field of view with this EVF. Also, higher frame rate equates to basically almost an optical uh, viewfinder feel, even though we are looking at an electronic screen, an OLED, which is amazing. I have to say that's one of the best things about the A6300, other than the obvious uh, UHD 4K capture and 120 frame per second uh, slow motion 1080p video that you can capture with it. Um, and of course, the better low light performance and most importantly, autofocus system is that EVF. It is really one of the best features of the A6300. So, I mean, ultimately what it comes down to is that, you know, the A6300 in just about every way is superior to the RX100 Mark IV. Uh, whether we talk about autofocus, uh, even on the 4K video capture, I mentioned that you could record without basically any limitations other than the 29-minute clips here in the U.S. that the camera is limited to. It won't do continuous recording. Uh, but also, clean Super 35 4K here with no pixel binning. Uh, the RX100 Mark IV, it simply isn't going to match up to what I've seen, and I have seen 4K out of both of these, obviously. Uh, so even on the video side of things, forget the overheating. Let's put that aside. The fact that this doesn't overheat and this does, um, the video is still going to look better even with... Uh, a kit lens. Now, keep in mind that when it comes to still side-by-side -side shooting in a lot of different, uh, I would say, environments, situations, the RX100 Mark IV can potentially outperform uh, the A6300 because even though it does have a smaller sensor, that Carl Zeiss piece of glass, that F1.8 lens, is a gem. So when we compare the kit lens to the built-on fixed lens that you'll find with the RX100 Mark IV, I can tell you right now, that Carl Zeiss piece of glass that's fixed onto the RX100 is going to give you better results, generally speaking, I'm not getting into pixel peeping here, uh, than this kit lens, but that is to be expected, even though they have basically the same range, very similar range. Uh, and that's why I wanted to point that out. But again, when it comes to video, autofocus, the EVF, um, even battery life, uh, granted, uh, neither is a heavyweight when it comes to battery life. They get roughly about the same battery life, 300 plus shots of stills. And if, you know, you mix still and video, then of course your results are going to be completely different. But this camera, unlike the RX100 Mark IV, can be charged from a battery pack. So if you have, you know, like I do, a 10,000 uh, milliamp battery pack that, you know, feeds out to micro USB and you're out of W series uh, charged up batteries, you can just plug that into the side of this and you're good to go. Another thing, the A6300 has clean 4K output, something you are not getting from the RX100. In fact, the only port that's on the RX100 is right here. It's the multi-port, the micro USB for charging and HDMI out. So you're not getting those features. Also, there's no microphone jack on the RX100. Uh, so you'd have to do audio completely separately, whereas here you can easily, uh, you know, use a separate mic and be good to go. Uh, so that's another nice thing that this camera has. Uh, neither has touchscreen, for those of you that are wondering. Both have Wi-Fi and NFC. Uh, this is an add-on grip, by the way, if you've been looking at this grip and wondering why the RX100 you see in the store doesn't have it. It is a Sony accessory. I think it's roughly 15 US, or at least that's where it started when I first bought it. I actually ported the one... Uh, that I had on the Mark III over to the Mark IV without issue. Didn't need to buy a new one. But ultimately, uh, these are both great cameras. And like I said, I feel they will uh, inherently be uh, compared <laughs> because even though they shouldn't necessarily be compared, again, the RX100 Mark IV is a pocket camera. It's part of the Cybershot line. The A6300 is part of the Alpha uh, interchangeable mirrorless line, even though it's APS-C and not full frame, uh, the pricing, and then again, the size. You know, I, I can't tell you how many people comment that even though the RX100 Mark IV is supposed to, be, supposed to be pocketable, they can't get it in their pockets. I don't have that problem, but I understand what they mean. There are a lot of jean pockets, pant pockets, where it will not fit, especially if you stick it inside a case, which I hope that you would. Um, so if you're one of those people that says, you know, the RX100 can't really fit in my pocket. I still end up having to put it in a bag of some sort. 
then that's why the A6300 should be right there on your list, especially since it does give you that room to mature and buy other lenses, even though that does make the A6300 a much more expensive proposition than the complete RX100 Mark IV, which you will never add anything to. Um, but that's also one of the downsides of the RX100 uh, Mark IV is that you can't ultimately mature beyond what you see right before you. The A6300 gives you, uh, you know, a nice abundance of inexpensive prime glass from Sony, uh, some third-party um, E-mount glasses out there as well. If you already own FE uh, mount glass, of course, that's going to work, even though it's full frame and it'll crop without issue. And then with adapters, you could use any lens by, you know, ma manufactured by any company any age, any vintage of your desire. And even though that was always the pitch from Sony with the A6300, or excuse me, with their mirrorless interchangeable lens cameras, today it's more true than ever before because there are far more adapters uh, out there. And now with that uh, phase detection system where it's at, uh, you know, autofocus even with Sony aim out lenses, um, you know, is superior than it ever could have been. So there's a lot to like about both of these. Uh, I just felt that it's a comparison that inherently will be made. Uh, and the fact that the A6300 does have, again, that 120 frames per second 1080p video capture, which is the slow-mo that you'll find here as well, even though this camera does up to 900, almost 1,000 frames per second, and Sony claims it's HD, it really isn't. It's more like 360p. Um, it makes these even more comparable when it comes to feature sets. Of course, as I keep mentioning, the A6300 is superior in just about every sense other than convenience. So if you find that the RX100 really isn't that convenient because you can't get it into a pocket, then you probably should be looking at this camera at least with uh, the pancake zoom kit lens. And then down the road, eventually, maybe you want to pick up something uh, to complement it and extend your range. My favorite lens, which I no longer have, sadly, the PZ18-200. Uh, to 200. I wish I had right now, but Sony's about a year late on delivering this camera as far as I'm concerned uh, because that is a perfect pairing. Granted, the Power Zoom 18-200 to 200 is a big lens. Uh, it's a dream for this camera, both with regard to Super 35 4K or UHD video capture, as well as still photography over a broad range without having to swap lenses. I mean, if there was one lens I could live with on this camera permanently, which is the case here with the RX100 Mark IV, as you all know, um, on the A6300, it would have to be uh, the PZ18-200 or the PZ18-105 to because those are really versatile, wide uh, range lenses that both have power zooms that are ideal for video. Uh, this will capture the sound uh, on its onboard mics of this zoom. Uh, with the 18 to 105, you shouldn't have that problem. I know with the 18 to 200, you had speed selectable. You definitely don't have that problem. Uh, of course, the RX100 will capture its own uh, zoom motor for those of you that aren't aware. But otherwise, these are both fantastic cameras. And I just felt it was necessary to compare them because I know that a consumer that doesn't own any camera and is looking at Sony right now, again, will inherently look at both of these and say, why are they so, cl so close in price? Hopefully, this video has answered that question and also made it clear which, despite their price difference being very narrow, which camera is right for you. I, again, I think that no one can really go wrong with the RX100 Mark IV, but if you don't ultimately find that it is as pocketable as Sony markets it, then the A6300 easily should be your choice because at the end of, you know, any day, the A6300 is going to outperform the RX100 in just about every task other than, again, convenience. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button, and as usual, please subscribe. Later.